Now you've got the store yep. and a barber shop and a nightclub. And you've still got the yes, club. And this is around 2000? 2000, the year 2000, yep. Okay, cool. So now that you've got those three things in place and everything's, you know, moving nicely for you, then Dawn Raid as a label has put together the Decepticons. Yeah, so South Side Story 1 came first that yeah. year. 2000 is the critical year. South Side <coughs> Story 1. Yeah. And we had a massive launch party and on that album was a group called Chaos. And the album didn't take off like we thought it would. But music became the sole f focus. So it was in 2001 when we went to make South Side Story 2 that the group Chaos introduced us to their cousins and their cousins was the group Decepticon which had Savage, Miracle, Alphys, and Devolo. So it was 2001 when Decepticons became officially part of Dawn Raid. So, that, so that's off the back of the introduction from the guys from the first release. Correct. And they were there on the sidelines too. Like the whole time we were doing South Side Story 1, um, Chaos was the, was, the, was the cousins. So they were always bringing Decepticons along. And Miracle, who's just a funny, legendary South Auckland figure anyway, he played football in one of the local rugby teams or gridiron or something. He would come to the bar and try and battle rap anyone. Like, I have so many <laughs> drunken memories of teenage Miracle out the front of the nightclub. He was too young to get in, but he would just turn up and try and battle rap whoever was walking out of the club. So, you know, props to Miracle, bro. Greatest freestyler ever from South Auckland. Yeah. Now, he, um, out of the Decepticons, when they've signed in 01, at the beginning, would you say that he was kind of like the standout of the group? He was the standout of the yeah. group. He was the standout. He was the standout. Without a doubt. I mean, just that, as an yeah, MC. Yeah. You know, there's hip hop. And then, so what is it that you guys think made him the standout? Was it just well, oh, the yeah. MC? No, no. Skills at the time, and, and, and you know, at the time, New Zealand and Australia hip hop, the, the people that were doing it, we were actually pretty well linked. Like, we, we knew the Obese Records guys. We knew Hijack and Torture. We knew... Back then, it was real beats, rhymes, four corners kind mm -hmm. of hip-hop. And so there was um, MC battles all the time. We actually yeah. had live MC battles a lot. And there was the ITF DJ championships and the DMC championships right. between Australia and New Zealand. So there was this real, like, four elements hip-hop at the time. Miracle won five battle for supremacies back to back and he rapped against damn native members he rapped against the best in the country and he just smoked everyone so he did this in a very short period of time between the years of 2001 2002 he was five-time battle champ like he, it was he it wasn't just us saying he was the greatest he was crowned the greatest and yeah. everyone saw it it was like the eminem eight mile thing miracle did that for real all over new zealand he ended up having a solo release yes uh, which had like a bunch of, or a handful of international artists no, on it. A bunch. It. The whole album was made in New York. Falling Angels came first. Oh, yeah. no, before that was the Decepticons album. Before, yeah. Miracle, before Miracle went solo, we did the group album. That was 2003. The Decepticons yeah. group album was the first yeah. album when we signed. So we did for two albums independently. And then the hype, and we signed a massive deal with Universal Records New Zealand. We signed the Master P deal. We got a P&D deal with Universal New Zealand in 2003 on a 75-25 split in favour of us, and we owned all the masters. So, you know, sorry, just popping my collar. We were ahead of the game. Decepticons came first. <laughs> <laughs> Decepticons came first, um, and we went number two at the time up against Ja Rule and 50 Cent and all them, and we had a massive song called Fallen Angels produced by P Money. From that release, Miracle was the standout yep. still. And then if you understand me and Dee's story, how we went, you know, nightclub, shop, we always looked at what worked. If something's working, we put all the money on what's working. Miracle's yeah. working, we put 50 grand on the White Sunday album and, and made the dream of, let's put him up. He's already beat everyone in New Zealand. The Australia's story, that too, was the story. That was the story. Take him to America. And let's put him up against Wu-Tang yeah. and Cool G Rap and all these big, you know, and, and also- Go to New York City. That's yeah, it. we had been touring and meeting all of these artists like Snoop, like the Alcoholics exhibit, all these people. So we were like, favor for a favor, mm. DJ Premier, 
We had made a relationship with the Duck Down guys. And so, we had another South Aucklander in New York at the time. Kirk Harding, most influential yes. South Aucklander you don't know and should know. <laughs> Kirk Harding was working at Loud Records. There was a New Zealand guy working at Loud Records. And he yeah. basically said, if you come, I'll plug everything up. So we yeah. got the money together and we made the play. And then so just to backtrack a little bit, because I'm very fascinated by the business side of things. You got Universal to give you guys a 75, 25 percentage split in your favor. Yep. And you got to keep- The Masters. The Masters. In so 2003. You, so you, own the, you guys own the publishing. Correct. Yes. This is before anyone was doing this. Everyone talks about giving the artists Masters. We, we did that from the start. We yeah. did that from day one. That's why I wanted to bring it back a bit because unheard of today, unheard of. bit more common. This, th that's normal now. Back then, yeah. unheard of. <laughs> unheard it was of. the other. It was the other way around, right? Right? Sanchez was the other way around. The artist got screwed. <laughs> Not on Dawn Raid. We gave everybody everything. That's Please it. clear that rumor up. Yeah. Everyone owned their masters. That's because we were artists first. We were artists first. Yeah, you got to remember that. That's, that's, that's where I come from, mm. you know what I mean? We so, wanted everyone to you know, have the biggest share. The artists that we had on board, we wanted to make sure that, you know, And all our artists from day one were on 50-50 JV deals. We never put artists on licensing deals. We never paid the minimum 17%. That's complete, utter false. Everyone had 50-50 from day one. That's the factual truth of the Dawn Raid label. We taught yeah. master ownership, JVs. own your all, and JVs. Since 2003, thank you. That's almost 20 years and ago. And shout out, shout out, you know, we don't want to take credit for this. Again, no. Hip Hop, Master P, No Limit Records, Cash Money Records, E40 Sick With It. I'm huge on Bay Area rap. Yeah. I love the Bay Area scene and I've watched them from the start. And the Bay Area West Coast scene and the New York guys too, um, like Loud Records. And Wu-Tang. How RZA structured the deal, you know, all the members got solo deals. They had one Wu-Tang album and then, yeah. so I was super sharp on the business side and I just copied what I saw. If they could do it, we'd ask for it in New Zealand. And then we went over to Australia and asked for it there as well. Multiple yeah. deals with different labels. That was our thing. Get the most checks. The, 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 the last thing. Oh, yeah.